One of, if not the most popular gamified platform out there for quizzes is Kahoot. Kahoot is a fun, engaging way that you can design, share, and easily implement games and gamified quizzes in your classroom. One other nice thing is that there's thousands upon thousands of pre-made Kahoots that educators have shared over the past few years that range across content areas and grade levels. Let's take a closer look at how you can design and build your own Kahoot. The first step is to go to kahoot.com and then choose either sign up or if you already have an account, click login. You can log in with one of these existing uh, single sign-ins or you can log in with a username and password that you create for this pa uh, platform. I'm gonna use continue with Google. And this is the dashboard and I know there's a lot here. So if you haven't used this much before, really the only place you have to take a look at the beginning uh, to get up and running is the create button up at the top right. So I'm gonna click create and I'm gonna do new Kahoot. So just a quick overview of the layout. The left is how you build out your questions. It's kind of like a slide deck that you would build out uh, based on how many questions you want in this quiz. At the top is where you would type your question and then you can set the time limit, point values, uh, answer selections, and then you can also add a resource to the question. Um, so I'm gonna start out here at the top, typing in my question. I'll keep the time limit at 20 seconds, keep the point value the same, and then answer options. I'm just gonna have a single answer to this question. Now here you can add images where you can upload your own from the image library, or you can actually add a YouTube link if you'd like it to play a video uh, before your question. So what I'm gonna do is click on upload image and then choose a file from my computer. And now at the bottom, I'm gonna choose a few different options for my students to answer this question. And then what you'll also do is click on this little icon here to choose the correct answer. Now another option you have is instead of text or uh, numbers, you can actually add images as the answer. So a lot of different ways that that could be valuable, especially for younger students, but just know that if you wanted to insert an image, that's where you would do so. Okay, so for the next question, I'm actually gonna choose from the question bank just to show you guys how that looks. So I'll add in the question that I was thinking of just to see if it's already been made before, just to speed things up a bit. And you can see here that this question actually already comes up. So I'm gonna add that in. I'll just double check that it's the correct answer. And now I have my sample Kahoot quiz. All right, the next step is clicking the done button, giving it a title. And now I have my Kahoot in my dashboard. Next step is how would I actually share this with students so that we can play a live game. So what I'll do is I'll launch this game and then have a separate browser window on the side of this one just so you can see what, what it looks like from the teacher standpoint as well as the student standpoint. All right, so this is my Kahoot. I can see my questions here and on the left you'll have the options on how you can actually get started and play. Once you click the play button, you have two options. You can either teach it live, and this could be for if you're doing a live class with students in front of you, or for it's a live virtual class. The second one is a sign. That's where if you wanted to actually have this be a self-paced game where not everybody has to play at the same time, uh, but it would provide a link or a way for students to jump into the game, do it on their own, still get a score, but it wouldn't have to be in a live session. What I'll do is I'll demo the live classroom example. Now, once you have this dashboard come up, you have a few other game options. So on the left, it's just for every student if they had their own device. On the right would be if they were playing with teams. So we're gonna keep the classic mode. There's also a few other game options at the bottom. Uh, this one is a friendly nickname generator that avoids inappropriate nicknames during the game. That, act that can happen, I know from experience. Uh, there's lobby music, you can turn that on or off. And then you also have some options regarding randomizing the order of the questions and the answers. Uh, and then some other advanced options towards the bottom uh, as far as rejoining uh, and then automatically moving through questions throughout the session. Now that my Kahoot is launched, uh, it's pretty simple to get your kids into the game. You just have them go to Kahoot.it or if they have the Kahoot app, uh, they can open that and then they would enter this game pin here. At this point, you'll also hear the Kahoot music. I adjusted the volume, uh, but this is what it would sound like and then you would wait for your players in the bottom left there. And as your students join the class, uh, you would see them populate on the bottom right. Let's take a look at the right uh, screen because that's what I'm gonna use for the student demo. So students again would go to kahoot.it and then from here they would enter the game pin. At this point, you can see on the left side, you can, I see that Tom has joined the class. I'm also gonna join with another account just so I can have multiple players in this game. 
Okay, now you can see that I have two players in the game and I'm ready to launch the game. So I'll click on the start button. Now on the left, you'll see that the quiz has begun. It has the question. It gives kids a, a little bit of time to see it. And then on the right, the students would choose the color. So the answers are actually on the screen to the left. They're not on the student devices. So the student would try to match up what the correct answer is. You also see that the time's running down. So I'm gonna choose this answer here. And I can see that I got the answer correct and gives me a score. It also gives you more points based on how quickly you answer it correctly. After each question, you can show the students the scoreboard. Then we'll go to question two. How many branches are there of the federal government? And you can see that both of us got that one correct. And we finish with the podium and ceremony. Let me adjust the volume so you guys can hear the wonderful music. And that is how you launch and play a Kahoot with your class. So this is the screen that the teacher sees once you wrap up a game. If you click view full report, this will bring you to a uh, screen that shows the data that came from that assessment. Uh, so I didn't have a whole lot of data here because there weren't a lot of questions and there weren't a lot of players. Uh, but this is where you can go through and look at each player's answers, uh, the percentage correct. Uh, and then you could also do it by question. So for instance, question one, I would say, all right, 50% of the, the class got that wrong. Just a quick way to get a gauge of um, student proficiency or understanding or lack thereof. Now I'm just gonna show you one more thing before we wrap up this Kahoot tutorial. At the top left, you're gonna see a discover section. There are actually a ton of pre-made Kahoots, so you can search right from this toolbar up at the top, but they also have collections. So for instance, election day, all of the uh, cahoots that are related to the elections are going to be here. Um, but again, if you want to see all different collections and top picks, they have a bunch of them that are curated on the Kahoot platform. So again, you don't have to necessarily make these from scratch. If you find some out there that are helpful or that you want to just kind of edit and duplicate and change up and revise for your class, you can do that as well to save you some time.